Welcome to Courageous 2020. We're glad you're here with us today. Maybe you don't realize it today, but if you're watching this video, chances are you are vulnerable. If you're a high school student or a university student, you are especially vulnerable today. I know, I know this is a hard idea to take in because biology tells us that your brain is awash with all kinds of chemicals that are telling you that you're invincible. But if you'll just give me a few minutes of your time today, I want to convince you both that you're vulnerable and that this is not necessarily a bad thing. Every year, 33,000 people between the ages of 15 and 24 will be seriously injured while at work. And those are just the injuries that have been reported. Without question, there are thousands and thousands more serious injuries that go unreported each year. And if that doesn't convince you, uh, maybe this will, that today, Every day in Canada, three people don't come home from work. This is a major issue that we have to address. If you're watching this today, I want you to know uh, that you especially, if you're between the ages of 18 and 24, you especially are vulnerable, particularly in the first 30 days of work. When you begin a job, uh, this is when we're most vulnerable to being catastrophically injured. You might be wondering why I'm giving this address today and why I'm doing this broadcast. Well, a number of years ago, my younger brother, who was 18, his second day on the job, uh, was injured. And six days after his injury, he was killed. Not a day goes by that I don't think about my brother. Not a moment goes by that I don't um, consider what he'd look like right now or what he'd be doing, and yet I don't get to experience any of these things. And my hope, um, the reason I do this every day, the reason I talk to young people like yourselves every day about the need to stay safe at work is uh, I, I wanna make sure that none of this happens to you. But it's not just physical injuries we're talking about. We're actually talking about psychological abuse as well as bullying and harassment. Some of you work in jobs where Physical injury is nothing that you're worried about. And so maybe you've already tuned me out thinking this message doesn't apply to me. You know, a couple of years ago when uh, you would go to talk about workplace health and safety, the topic of harassment and bullying never came up. But in the last few years, we've seen a great increase in people's awareness and things like the Me Too movement have really helped bring this topic to light. But we still have a lot of work to do. Overall, last year, 19% of women and 13% of men said they were harassed while at work. This is a major issue still uh, plaguing our workplaces, and we have so much work to do. So what's the solution, whether it's physical vulnerability at work or psychological vulnerability at work? We actually think that there are some fixes that we can make that will help safeguard us during our most vulnerable years. We call this broadcast the Courageous Broadcast, partly because we want young people to be able to acknowledge, to have the courage to acknowledge that they are vulnerable. Now, when we think about the word vulnerability, it's not usually a term that any of us want to be relegated to. Partly because when we think about vulnerability, we think about things like tiny little kittens or your grandma's china set or something that's just weak and fragile. But I, I want you to think about vulnerability in a different way. In some ways, we have to acknowledge, have the courage to acknowledge that if we're uh, a teenager or a young adult, that we are more vulnerable. I understand that it's easy to say, well, my friend might be more vulnerable, but I somehow am invincible. The case of making ourselves different than anybody else is true of human nature. But we've called this broadcast the Courageous Broadcast because we want to call you to be courageous and admit your own vulnerability when you get on the job, when you get that, when you get a new job. And in those first 30 days, acknowledging that we're vulnerable is the first step to keeping ourselves safe. Step two, refuse unsafe work. As a young person, as a worker, you need to know that you have the right to say, no, I'm not going to do this if you're feeling unsafe or unsure. This has become particularly important in these days as we're dealing with uh, a pandemic that is uh, really 
pushing on our feelings of safety. And all across the nation of Canada and, and the United States, people are saying, putting up their hands saying, no, I don't feel safe if I don't have the right PPE. I don't, and I'm not going to work and put myself in danger and endanger my family. And we're seeing all kinds of examples of people understanding that they do have the right to say no to unsafe work. You have the right to refuse unsafe work without fear of reprisal. If you think your job is likely to endanger you or another person, you don't have to do it. And the key thing is this, it's against the law for your employer to punish you, suspend you, or fire you for refusing unsafe work. And your employer can't threaten to punish you for refusing unsafe work. Here are some situations where you might exercise your right to refuse unsafe work. You were asked to use equipment or machinery that you think is unsafe. You were asked to do a task but haven't been given proper personal protective equipment. There's something in your work environment that's a danger to you or someone else, like bad air quality or a slippery floor. Or there's someone in your workplace that's a danger to you or someone else, like a violent customer or coworker. So how do I refuse unsafe work? Let's say you're asked to do something at work that you feel is unsafe. Stop. Immediately stop doing the task. This is the hardest part because it takes some courage. Remind yourself, you're not letting anyone down by refusing unsafe work. Number two, report it. Tell your supervisor, I'm exercising my right to refuse unsafe work. Calmly explain the situation. Number three, ask your boss to investigate. Your boss has an obligation to conduct an investigation in your presence to determine if the work is unsafe. And number four, Call the Ministry of Labor. If the issue isn't resolved and you think the work is still unsafe, call the Ministry of Labor and tell them you're refusing unsafe work, or ask someone to call on your behalf. It's important to keep it simple. Don't do something that seems unsafe. Here's a sign that you should refuse unsafe work. Fear. It's not a good sign if you're scared at work. Some things go together. Fear and work don't go together. If you're scared at work, there's probably a good reason for it. Trust your instincts. Refusing unsafe work is what being courageous is all about. Know your rights and exercise them. You might not be saying no uh, for yourself, but think of the other people who you're standing up with, people who are maybe younger than you or less strong than you, you're actually saying no to unsafe work to save other people's lives. Step three, have a plan for harassment. You know, in the first number of years that we talked to young people all across the nation, people would say to us, my work is unsafe, but I'm not sure how to even address the fact that it's unsafe. I feel like my boss will laugh at me or my colleagues will laugh at me. And what we recognized is that it's not enough to just know that you're vulnerable or to know that you have the right to say no to unsafe work. What we actually have to do is get a plan together for the eventuality that we are going to have to say no. And so maybe just right now as you're watching this through your computer or your TV, you could think about this. What would I do? If somebody harassed me or bullied me, how would I respond? And having that plan in place uh, makes it easier to execute that plan when we get into situations that are difficult. Are you being harassed at work? Maybe you have a boss who's a jerk or a creepy coworker, but you're not sure if it's actually harassment. Let's quickly talk about three types of harassment that happen a lot. Workplace violence, sexual harassment, bullying. Workplace violence includes any type of hitting, pushing, or kicking, but there doesn't need to be actual physical contact. Workplace violence also includes verbal threats and threatening actions, like shaking a fist in your face. Remember, if someone hurts you at work or if you're in immediate danger, call 911. Secondly, Sexual harassment includes any type of unwanted touching, sexual jokes, and creepy staring. It can also include things like sharing or talking about pornography at work or having someone invade your personal space. 
If someone at work is making inappropriate comments about your body, gender, or sexual orientation, it's sexual harassment. Thirdly, bullying. It's sad but true. Bullies are everywhere, even at work sometimes. Bullying includes any behavior that's meant to embarrass, intimidate, or insult you. It includes spreading rumors about you or sabotaging your work to make you look bad. If your boss or coworker swears at you, makes mean comments that make you feel small, or steals your things, you may be working with a bully. Now, let's return to the question. Are you being harassed at work? Are you facing workplace violence, sexual harassment, or bullying? If so, take action. Step one, write it down immediately. Include as many details as you can remember. What happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Who was there? How did it make you feel? Then collect any type of evidence of harassment you might have, like text messages, emails, pictures, timesheets, or schedules. Step two, speak out. Tell your boss what happened. If your boss is harassing you, tell your boss's boss. If your company has an HR department, tell someone from HR immediately. Unite with your coworkers. Together, your voice is louder and chances are you aren't the only person being harassed. By speaking out, you could be helping a bunch of your coworkers who are also being harassed by the same person. The most important thing is that you don't keep it to yourself. Talk to a trusted friend, family member, or doctor about the situation. Step three, if things don't change and you're still being harassed, you might want to start looking for a new job or quit your job altogether. If you're not sure, talk to someone you trust. In some cases, you should speak with a lawyer. You should speak with a lawyer if the harassment won't stop, you had to quit your job because you were being harassed, or if you were fired from your job for speaking out about harassment. To find a free lawyer in your area, search for a legal aid clinic. Call and say you have a problem at work. Remember, you're worth more than a paycheck. Maybe you're in a situation where you have been harassed at work or where you have been asked to do unsafe work. And it's a big deal to be able to stick up your hand all by yourself. This is where we want to remind you that you're not in this alone. Find some colleagues that you could talk to. Find some people that you're working with and say, can we get a plan together to address this? You know, many of us uh, in the society we're living in right now don't feel very connected. But when we begin to realize that others around us are vulnerable as well, it helps us to not just think about ourselves, but to think about everybody else around us. Accepting the fact that many of the people that you work with are also vulnerable vulnerable gives us this opportunity to not just think about ourselves but to think about everyone else around us and this makes us stronger. Partly we don't like to be labeled as vulnerable because it means that we're weak or somehow defective. What we want you to see today though is that your vulnerability doesn't make you weak. It actually helps you to be an even stronger asset to the company that you work for. Your vulnerability allows you to see things that nobody else sees. You're going to walk into that workplace uh, for the first time and recognize holes that they have and gaps that they have that nobody else can see because they've been in the forest for too long. Your newness actually brings freshness that your company needs. Your boss needs you to stick up your hand and say, hey, what about this process or what about that process? Your vulnerability makes you uh, able to see things that nobody else can see. Step four, recognize a good employer. Hi, my name is Rob Ellis. Um, I'm really happy to be able to, uh, to speak to uh, the next generation of leaders that will change not only the nation that we live in, but also the world. Uh, today, I wanted to, um, to journey with you a little bit. Uh, I, I lost my 18-year-old son, David, in a workplace incident. Uh, so this is really a personal path and journey that I'm on that you are on as well. Today I'd like to talk about um, how you, you can recognize what are really good companies, some of the attributes of a really good company who I want you to work for. So let's, let's just begin together. 
really good companies, they get this. Uh, they do a really good job on the orientation and training. So let's break it down. Orientation means not just sitting at a computer and click, I've got that one, click, I've got that one, click, I've got, and meaning uh, the compliance of, of, of a government uh, regulation. Orientation actually means showing you around where some of the hazards might, might be or some potential incidents that might occur. So I, I find that really good companies, they take the time to actually make you feel comfortable and show you around where you, you're going to work. Training is, is really important as well, especially in that first um, 90 days where it's really critical, um, where most of the incidents occur, and in fact, most of the turnover in staff uh, um, occurs in that first 90 days. So getting that training part at the initial stage is really, really important. Really good companies do a really good job in making you feel comfortable. I, I don't want you to work at a company where uh, the speed and the production is so quick and the information coming at you is so quick that you just cannot keep up with it and you don't want to put up your hand and ask for help. Great companies slow it down and then they, they build it up uh, accordingly and, and you're going to feel a lot more comfortable working for a company that looks after you, that provides you with really good training, especially in the first 90 days. So let's move on to uh, coaching and, and communication. Two critical things uh, um, that really good companies uh, do exceptionally well, and I want you to look for that, and I want you to ask for that uh, um, when you first apply for that job. Somebody's helping you out, they're checking in on you. They want you to be able to report issues that are both negative and positive. That's really important. And, then, and you'll begin to develop a little bit of, of, of trust with somebody that's working alongside you, that's helping you. You'll be able to ask them questions. They'll be able to listen to you, probably on a scheduled basis. Uh, really good companies actually have coaching on a scheduled basis, maybe once a week for 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it could be in the early morning, could be at lunch, or could be after work. Uh, but they're, good companies also um, uh, get the benefit of listening to you and your innovative ideas. So that's, that's the upside for companies. And well, I want you to go into companies and, uh, with the idea that you're going to uh, bring your innovative ideas. And that's the exciting part today because the next generation of young leaders bring amazing amazing ideas. I know I used to own a company, I hired young people and they brought incredible ideas. So I'm on that part of it, I'm very excited uh, for you to get connected to a really good company because you're going to bring that your good ideas and change the way they do business. The final thing I just wanted to talk to you about is finding a company that has really trustworthy and honest leadership at all levels of the organization. I, I, I can tell you that great companies that I work with, they have amazing leaders who really care about their, their employees. You just feel good around them. You want to watch them. You want to learn from them. You want to gain new skills from them. Great leaders make a difference at all levels of the organization. And I really just want you to get connected with a great company that has that kind of a great leadership culture throughout their whole organization. You'll really benefit by it. At the end, I want you to get connected to a great family, a family that cares about you. They want you to have a great experience. They want you to build great relationships and friends in the organization. I know that you will really benefit by being in a great family. And I know it's really important to you because I've interviewed 250,000 young people across Canada and the United States, and they keep coming back to me and say, I want to be part of a great family. So seek that out. Seek out an organization that really cares about you, that'll pour into you, let you have a great experience. You are worth it. We need to look after you because you are future leaders and you will change the world.
be champions. Hi, I'm Caleb Ellis. As an employment lawyer, I see a lot of people who are in difficult situations at work. Whether they're being harassed or bullied or pressured to work in unsafe situations. And sadly, a lot of the stories are the same. So while I can't give you personal legal advice, let's talk about some of the universal warning signs of a shady employer. So you can avoid working for someone that doesn't respect you and you can recognize when you need to take action. Warning sign number one, your employer asks you inappropriate questions during your interview, like what country are you from? What religion are you? What's your sexual orientation? How's your health? Do you have any kids? Asking questions like these is against the law and could be considered discrimination. You have to think, do these questions have anything to do with my ability to do this job? If you get asked questions like this in a job interview, it may be a good indication that this is not the type of person you want to be working for. Warning sign number two, your employer pressures you into signing an employment contract. If your employer asks you to sign a contract, make sure you take your time and read it over. You may even want to take the contract home and review it in private. If there's something in the contract you don't understand, call a legal aid clinic in your area and ask for advice from an employment lawyer. Don't let your employer pressure you into signing something you don't understand. Warning sign number three, your employer doesn't give you training or doesn't pay you for training. Basic health and safety awareness training is required for all workers and generally speaking, you must get paid for training. If your job involves using any type of heavy equipment, you should especially make sure that you get proper training and feel comfortable using it. Remember, you should get training before you attempt any new task at work. Warning sign number four, your employer makes you feel stupid or punishes you for asking questions or refusing unsafe work. If you refuse unsafe work, report an injury, or ask for clarification and your boss makes you feel dumb, or even worse, cuts your pay or threatens to fire you, you're probably working for somebody who doesn't respect your rights. Remember, it's against the law for an employer to punish you for exercising your rights. Warning sign number five. You get injured at work, but your employer discourages you from making a claim for workers' compensation or offers you cash or time off instead. If you get injured at work, you may be entitled to workers' compensation payments, but some shady employers will try to intimidate injured workers and prevent them from reporting the accident. If this happens to you, be aware that you may be dealing with somebody who doesn't respect your rights. So what if you're experiencing some of these warning signs at work? It may be a sign that you need to take action. You can take action by first taking detailed notes of what's happening. If you're being mistreated by a coworker or your boss or manager, make sure you write it down. Record what happened, when it happened, and how it made you feel. Then speak out. Talk to your boss or manager about the situation. If nothing changes, unite with your coworkers, then go talk to your boss. In some cases, you should get help from a lawyer. Contact a legal aid clinic in your area if you're being mistreated by your employer, or if you had to quit your job because of the way your boss was treating you. If things don't change, you might want to start thinking about looking for another job. If you don't have to, don't work for somebody who doesn't respect you. Here's how you can be part of the Courageous Movement moving forward. The first thing is accept your vulnerability and accept other people's vulnerability around you. Understand that if you are between the ages of 16 and 24, that you are vulnerable and that's okay. It actually makes you a strong asset to your company. The second thing is to know our rights. Understand that you have the right to say no to unsafe work. But also understand that it's not just enough to know that you have the right to say no. You actually have to have a plan in advance for how you are going to say no to the bullying and harassment. Finally, be willing to stand up for yourself and others. 
and spread the news about this movement that we are going to be a group of courageous people who make Canada a great place to live and to work. So, what does a great company look like? Let's meet some people who know what it means to work for a great company. The question, what makes Electra an excellent company, is answered simply with, our people make the company excellent. Our employees have come together now more than ever, and I'm proud of the great work everyone is doing during these uncertain times. While these times are challenging, the aspect of safe work has been and continues to be at the forefront of all we do. Throughout these challenging times, we've implemented practices to ensure the safety of employees and the public. I'm so proud of all Electra employees and the way everyone has adjusted to these new working conditions and the way we've come together to support each other and our community. I believe companies are only as great as their people. Electra is an excellent company because of the people who continue to work hard and safely to ensure our customers continue to experience the excellent service they've come to expect from us. Hi, I'm Tom Nichols, Health Safety Staff Officer with the Power Workers Union. I'd like to thank Rob Ellis for inviting us to the 2020 Courageous event and talk a little bit about health and safety culture and our organization. The power workers represent the largest number of electrical workers in the province of Ontario. Generation, transmission, distribution. Our members work in a very unforgiving environment. When something goes wrong, it has severe consequences. We were the first organization to negotiate the right to refuse unsafe work prior to it becoming legislation by the government. We also make sure that we work with our companies as partners in safety to ensure our members have the proper training, tools, and equipment to do their job safely. These are strange and not seen before times. We must ensure that we maintain not only each other's safety, but our family's safety as well. Please stay safe. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Lorette. I'm a Senior Vice President at Electra Utilities in Hamilton. Electra is the largest municipally owned electric utility in Canada. So there's a really good chance that we're probably delivering electricity to your home. Now I know a lot of you are at the point where you're pursuing careers, either part-time or full-time, and I want you to consider the electricity sector as one of your choices because it's one of the best places to work provides a lot of opportunities and is one of the safest industries going. Now look at me, I started in this sector almost 40 years ago as a draftsman. And through training and development and seizing opportunities, I have worked my way up through engineering and operations into a senior vice president role. And it's been a great opportunity, let me tell you. So I love to advocate to have more women in leadership. And I speak to a lot of young women in high school and colleges about pursuing careers in engineering, technology, and the trades because it's a great opportunity for women. And at Electra, diversity and inclusion programs are alive and well, and we're seeing the number of women grow in our industry. When you start at Electra, you know, you're provided opportunities to do continuing education, and we have tuition reimbursement programs, but you also have access to mentors and sponsors who are very important when you start out your career. You know, but it's not all about the work. We really care about people's well-being. And today, you know, it's very important that people's physical and mental well-being is looked after. That's a quick, very quick overview of Electra. Um, I hope you all stay safe, stay home, wash your hands, and hopefully we'll be able to meet in person one day. Thank you. My name is Rafaela. I'm a safety nerd from eCompliance. We are a safety technology solution based right out of Toronto, Ontario. We work with a lot of hazardous industries across North America, including construction, mining, infrastructure, utilities, energy. I feel like I could go on forever. 
but we work with a lot of amazing people. I work with a lot of amazing people and I'm excited to share some tidbits with you guys today. So for Courageous 2020, a lot of companies will be shedding light on different aspects of what they believe is a strong workplace culture. So I'm gonna be talking about safety culture and leadership integrity. So for safety culture, that is our backbone. We talk about it day in and day out, and that's truly what makes each and every one of us a safety nerd. Safety culture is truly important in every aspect of what people do on a daily basis. And that's not only from our Joint Health and Safety Committee that I'm so thrilled to be a part of, making sure that we have the right PPE every single day, a sturdy desk, ergonomic chairs, you name it, e-compliance takes care of us every single day. The second aspect is leadership integrity. So e-compliance believes in doing the right thing for the right reasons. Since the start of the company, Adrian has done a phenomenal job at leading, you know, trailblazing the way for each and every one of us. And because we're a people-centric company, we want to make sure that our fellow safety nerds are being taken care of every single day. And that not only means that providing the best support and believing in the right thing and providing them with the right resources, but making sure that we're all on the right page and we're all supporting each other every single day. So for Courageous 2020 and beyond, I encourage you guys to take the time to be courageous for your friends, your family, your coworkers, and yourself. Hi, Doug Matthew here from Cormorant Utilities. I wanted to talk a bit about what it's like to work in the electrical industry. The electrical industry is a high hazard industry. However, they take all the precautions necessary to make sure that those hazards are controlled. So when you're out there in the workforce looking for an industry to get into, the utility industry is a great industry to get into. They supply the training, the expertise, and the encouragement to report hazards at any time. So when you're out there looking for a job, that's one of the better industries to look for. Thank you. Bonjour. On me demandait si j'étais prête à euh, partager mon expérience dans la belle grande famille de Pomerleau. Euh, J'ai dit, euh, dit oui tout de suite. Euh, la raison principale, c'est parce que euh, dès le premier jour, en étant dans cette belle grande équipe, j'ai euh, aimé mon expérience. Euh, peu importe l'âge que vous avez, que vous soyez jeune, Vous ayez plus, ou que vous ayez plus d'expérience. C'est une, une belle aventure. Ils sont innovatifs. Euh, ils veulent... Euh, écoutez, si vous voulez euh, progresser dans, au niveau de votre expérience, vos connaissances, les formations, ces choses-là, c'est un océan d'expérience. Euh, depuis le jour 1, ça a été euh, une telle, tellement une belle aventure Puis je, je veux que cette aventure-là continue. Donc, euh, si vous êtes euh, le genre de personne qui aime euh, avancer et qui aime euh, évoluer dans, au niveau du travail et tout ça, donc euh, on vous attend chez Pomerleau. Merci. All right, good day and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you remotely. I'm Steve Lacey, an operations team leader with Nova Chemicals and I'm responsible for the safe operation of a world-class polyethylene manufacturing facility. Losing colleagues to workplace injury or mental illness is traumatic for organizations. It forever changes an organization. Great organizations recognize this and promote work-life balance. People need to know they are valued and will be cared for in their workplace. As a leader and an employee, it is always extremely pleasing to hear third parties state how much they like coming to our work sites. They'll tell you they appreciate the safe environment, the help willingly provided by our employees, and that their concerns are heard and addressed. Nothing is more important than doing a job safely, and if the task cannot be completed safely, we will not do it. There is always a better way. A safe workplace is the result of a nurturing environment where people truly care about each other and willingly intervene to protect others. It takes everyone to create such an environment. My name is Daryl O'Keefe, Regional Vice President of Ontario here at the FIX Network. FIX Network includes FIX Auto Collision, Pro Color Collision, Novus Glass and Speedy Auto Service. As a business manager, it is important I do whatever I can to not only make sure employees, partners and customers feel comfortable in our facilities, but that everyone returns home at the end of the day safe and healthy, with the knowledge that the next day will be no different. As an employee, I'm happy to say I do feel just that way working in a supportive, safety-conscious environment where my physical, mental, and emotional well-being are all supported. 
As a member of my own family, I need that comfort and security so I too can return home each day knowing the next day will be the same. I want to thank you for listening. Stay safe and stay well.